Okay, well here's a photograph you've probably seen before. Uh, it's a balloon that's been filled with water and the balloon's popping, but uh, it's taken right at the instant the uh, balloon is pulling back and the water is yet to be affected by gravity. So you get this kind of balloon shape. It's a neat photograph. Uh, it's usually done by uh, darkening a room and getting a, a bright uh, flash uh, based on an Xeon bulb like this one and opening up the uh, camera to a bulb setting which uh, captures all the available light and then you create the action you set off the flash and uh, you capture these kind of photos. Um, I was thinking about my super bright LED module and I was wondering if I could use it as a substitute for an Xeon flash and uh, that's what this video is about basically. I uh, went down the engineering path and uh, created a, uh, a very good stop motion uh, rig using uh, this uh, very uh, available 100 watt LED module you can get off eBay. So the first thing to do is figure out how to uh, trigger the flash. Uh, obviously a push pin with a, a nice sharp uh, top to it. And I drilled out a partial hole into this piece of oak. And of course, as you can imagine, as the balloon falls, it'll uh, push down onto this piece of wood and onto a switch, which of course triggers. So a real simple arrangement. Uh, you see that with a lot of technical photography is actually behind the scenes. There's uh, always a little bit of bodging going on. But this works actually surprisingly well. It's obviously, uh, with the weight of the wood, it half presses that switch down, so only the slightest amount of force required to actually trigger the uh, flash unit. Okay, well here's the control circuitry, all based upon an Arduino Nano. Uh, I think I paid uh, about $2 for a bag of these things. I can't believe how cheap they are, and they're actually incredibly useful, these little uh, control circuit projects. A human interface, an OLED display with some buttons, I'll get to that in a moment and then a high side switch. Essentially uh, the Arduino has to drive a 100 watt LED and of course it can't do that directly. Uh, you need to convert up and uh, allow a much more powerful power supply to actually control the LED. Uh, and then some uh, banana jacks going off to the actual module and to the lab power supply which is actually providing the power for the uh, the product. Uh, built old school onto an old chunk of wood. Uh, I guess kind of the meaning of a breadboard originally. Uh, operation is uh, fairly straightforward. You have to have a, an ability to adjust the amount of time from the point where this little switch gets depressed until the LED fires. Um, and that's because uh, you need to capture the exact moment you're looking for. Um, here's a pile of balloons, uh, 48 of them to be exact. Uh, it took a long time to get the timing right. Um, what would happen is you, often the flash goes off either too soon or too late. And you get these kind of photographs I'm showing here. Um, but once you get the time dialed in, of course, then you get the photograph you're desiring. Uh, the other interesting uh, little quirk uh, is you have to have some sort of ability to arm the module and then you need a very deterministic time for the point where the switch depresses. Normally in operation the code here is running and scanning the keyboard and doing all sorts of interactive things which would result in indeterminate timing. I'll uh, throw the code up in my blog if you want to take a look at it. But uh, once you arm the module basically it stops looking at the keyboard, stops doing anything interactive, it just goes into a tight loop and then waits for the switch to be depressed and uh, off it goes. Um, the high side switch, a real classic circuit here, I'll just enter a sketch here, is a little NPN transistor which uh, uh, allows you to drive the uh, gate of this uh, PMOS uh, FET uh, is in a big old uh, TO220 package. So um, this is how you control a fairly significant voltage, fairly significant amperage uh, easily with an Arduino, a uh, really uh, classic circuit. So um, again, it's a really nice uh, demonstration of how much uh, you can do with these little tiny Arduinos. Um, it's really clearly why they're very popular is because uh, you can really get a lot of uh, neat stuff done with a minimum of overhead. So uh, there we go. Uh, that was a control circuit for this uh, project. So I thought that was rather neat, uh, sort of an unconventional use of these uh, very large uh, LED arrays. Uh, something that uh, has only been recently possible to do. This used to be the entirely the domain of the Xeon tube. So uh, you arm it and you produce a bit of light. Um, now it's not a huge amount of light and the Xeon tube probably has uh, it beat uh, by far, but really controllable with a microprocessor. I can do all sorts of neat things uh, that uh, would be difficult with an Xeon tube. Um, and of course, I can create arrays of these. So an interesting approach uh, to taking uh, freeze time photography.